know we're addicted to the results. That's it's like once you start seeing those results, you it's it, you don't want to stop. You do not yeah. want to turn back. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds so cliche, but it's it's the truth. And any anybody in fitness will tell you that. But you must enjoy it. You have to it's, enjoy it's not it. like, oh, I gotta go to the gym today. I'm like, oh, let's go, because I gotta go. I gotta go to the gym today. Like I got some things I need to do. The difference like, between a hobby and a lifestyle. Right. Welcome, Hustle and Fit family. I hope you guys are having an awesome week. I'm so glad that you're back with us today. I have an amazing interview again. I always say that, but I find that I keep meeting new and amazing people. So that's why these interviews keep getting better and better. So today I have and I have Victoria Jenkins on the podcast today. And, you know, there you have a, um, Victoria is a nutritionist and Isaiah is a fitness coach. Now, they believe in like the 80 20 rule. You know, 80%, you, you know, you do healthy, nutritious meals. But that 20%, they like to have a little bit of fun. You can enjoy the food, the meals, and, and things that you love to eat. So if you're looking for a less restrictive way to get in shape, lose weight, and have fun, this is your team. Hey, guys, how's it going today? Hey. How's it going? Oh, my goodness, man. You guys are doing some amazing stuff. How did you guys get into this? Like, I want to hear your stories. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we start? Um, all right, I'll try to make mine long story short. Um, um, growing up, um, family history on both mom and dad's side, obesity, overweight, and I knew right then for me, just seeing the medications and the struggles and having a grandmother with diabetes and legs amputated, I knew straight off that that wasn't what I wanted. Um, so it was very important for me at a younger age to be in shape and take my health very seriously. Um, also, I was the very skinny kid who got picked on for being so skinny. So secretly I'd be like binge eating, 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 trying to gain weight so I could fit in with other people, not realizing that wasn't the way to go. Um, over time, I eventually got with the trainer, learned some things, and then it just picked up from there. And I've been with it ever since. And um, for my story, it's similar to Victoria. I have the family history on, on my father's side. And on my father's side, um, we tend to uh, die young. And so my father made this point of emphasis to me. Me being diagnosed at nine months as an asthmatic, he was always... Um, hard on you know you got to push yourself a little extra because you are an asthmatic um we automatically work harder so my fitness journey was just more so like i always just wanted to be the fastest the most athletic person and i always felt like i always had to work a little harder because i had issues with breathing so i always had to push harder but as i got older um it just kind of the the hobby just tr uh, started to turn into a lifestyle and he always said that you know, I don't want you to fall into the same category as the rest of the family. Even if I have to pay for your gym membership, I want you to always stay in shape. And that was a big encouragement that I never realized until years later. So um, after I got, you know, started doing some things on my own, I started getting into it. I reached out to a coach and, and, and got into it a little bit more and started to, uh, she convinced me to actually compete and step on stage. So she's been one of my biggest um, inspirations um, up to this point. So um, we just decided to stick with it and decided to take our knowledge and education, combine it, and, and spread that knowledge and education to, to everybody across the world. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. So actually, as somebody who has, uh, you know, uh, you know a, a physical impairment, um, but you're doing like, I think like bodybuilding and you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So people wouldn't even know that unless you told them. So right. For everyone else out there who's having, you know, having challenge, what's the mindset shift? Like, how do you kind of keep yourself focused? And that's a question for the both of you. How do you guys keep yourself mentally um, on that level to go beyond even your own physical limits? Well, I can start briefly. Oh, go um, for me personally, everybody's motivation is going to be different. Some, we might have some commonalities with some, but for the most part, for me, it's just been, um, I just had, I've always had this never, um, never be satisfied attitude. And because I am a personal trainer, you know, I can't, you know, uh, be the walk the walk, talk the talk and, you know, not back any, back any of that up. So my clients or our clients actually keep us a little bit motivated, but for self, it's just 
all it's going back like I, I want to be different I want to look different and I want to break that family trend that generational curse of, of the diseases that we battle um, and, and and that is relatable in all communities so motivation for me is just self it's just um, people count on me people look 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 at me as as an example to lead so I've always been a leader and not a follower so that's just my own personal uh, per, you know personal well-being as far as how I stay motivated for myself um, as for me it, it's become so routine that if I don't do it I feel like I'm off so it's like tell people it's like brushing your teeth and washing your face it's engraved that it's a part of my day it it's what I need if I don't have it I, I don't feel the same and it I guess it's the the drive it's it's I can't explain it but it's just like a part of you basically <laughs> yeah it's, it's <laughs> what I have to do I feel like yeah we tell people like once you know people always would 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 joke on us and say you guys are addicted to the gym and we always say no we're addicted to the results that's it's like true. once you start seeing those results, you it's it, you don't want to stop. You do not yeah. want to turn back. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds so cliche, but it's it's the truth. And any anybody in fitness will tell you that. But you must enjoy it. You have to it's, enjoy it's it. not like, oh, I gotta go to the gym today. I'm like, oh, let's go, because I gotta go. I gotta go to the gym today. Like it's, I got things I need to do. The difference like, between a hobby and a lifestyle. Right. Very right. powerful. Very powerful. And what do you find that with your clients that you're working with, what do you find are the typical mistakes they make when they first start getting working with you guys? Ah, I know it's a lot, but <laughs> that were the top five, maybe. <laughs> um, one five. is under eating. Always number one, because they feel like they need to be on a diet and with the diet comes restriction. So they're already under eating, thinking they're having 2,000 plus calories and they're barely hitting 1,000 calories. And then to cut from that, that's even more detrimental. Um, cardio, everyone always wants to do pointless hours of cardio. Like, if you, you'd be surprised if you just limit your cardio and lift more, do a lot more resistance training, um, you'll see more results. You'll actually see results faster. Um. To add to what Victoria said, um, it's the it's this myth of of carbs are bad. Um, yes. Yeah. So on top of telling <laughs> our clients that um, we want them to eliminate diet out of their vocabulary, look at this as a nutrition lifestyle. Um, so you can still enjoy the foods that you want to eat um, and that you love to eat, and we can still get you you know to, to the results that you that you long for. So yeah, I mean the top, you can narrow the top five down to just one and just put it all under nutrition. That's typically the thing <laughs> yep. that, that we face with clients in the, in the beginning. You can't work off a bad uh, nutrition plan, basically. You cannot, oh. cannot work off, cannot. <laughs> oh, that's so true, that's so true. And then what do you say to people that say, okay, cause you guys are also owners of uh, VIP um, business, mm -hmm. fitness. So it's, so how do you guys balance that out? Cause for those people who are like, Oh, I'm so busy. I've got kids. I got, how do you two like business fitness, how do you guys make that whole thing come together? Um, you have to create a habit. Once you create that habit, it turns into a routine. So for us, um, because I work three 12 hour shifts, those are days I take my rest days because I'm just as busy at work. Um, as a, if it was a day that I'm off and I'm just training with clients. So those are my rest days. And then it's easier for me to get my workouts in first thing in the morning. And then I go to work for VIP clients and then the kids and things like that. Because after I get lost in my day, I'm tired. I just want to sit on the couch and I'm done. So I know if I get it done first thing in the morning, I'm all set. So it's finding out what will work best for you because some people don't like to get up at 4.30 five o'clock in the morning, completely understand. But will you have that same energy to go after you had a long day? I think the biggest thing Victoria said was finding what works for you. Everybody's family and family dynamic lifestyles are different. So you have to first be committed, just as you're committed to your family, just as you're committed to your job, 
you have to be committed to your, to the fitness portion. So our our family, they understand that this is what we do. Now we do we're we're talented and and do other things, um, and we both work full time jobs, um, but we we structure it in a way to where we have certain times designated for business, we have certain times designated for for uh, for work. We have certain time dedicated just for family, and one never crosses into the other. There may be ideas that pop up here and there when we were at family, but it's just like it lasts about two minutes, and then it's just like okay, write it down. We remember it. We'll touch on it. So it's just it's just about the balance. Our 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 family and and and, and everything they they understand um, what we're about and what what it is that we're trying to do. We have a goal. We have goals, and and that's we we just don't let anything interfere in, in getting in the way of that. Nice. I got that. And what is your, like, I know each client is different and I know everyone has a different structure, but for you two, what is your like workout look like? What would, what would I see if I was watching you guys from Monday to Friday? What would that kind of plan look like? I'll go first. Hey, um, yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, my workouts um, would be considered what is called old school. So I am, um, I'm basic compound movement. So if you were to come to the gym with me, a lot of people think because the way I look like I'm not working out with him because he's going to kill me. <laughs> um, so, uh, my, I'm pretty basic, you know, I'm a five minute warm up. I get in five minute warm up. I may do a little bit of stretching depending on the exercise. I have one or two muscle groups that I just focus on. Um, so I hit those muscle groups. I'll switch it up with supersets. I'll switch it up with pyramids. If I need to go into explanation with that, you can ask that as a separate question. Um, but so I do that. Um, my my exercise, my workouts typically consist of of six exercises, um, four sets minimum. Um, you know, I don't really count reps, which might surprise people. Huh. I just go until it hurts or it burns. Muhammad Ali, there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anymore. There's there, you know. The, they are, there's the cliche saying you're, 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 you don't start counting until after it starts burning. Um, and then after that, typically just depending on what I've worked, you know, I'll do uh, 15, 20 minutes post cardio. And of course that's off season. So if it's anything in season, it's, it's typically two a days. So um, that's where the balance really comes into play. Oh, wow. That's crazy. And what about you, Victoria? Um, I'm a little bit, She's more creative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to incorporate different things so I so I don't get bored or try new things. Um, so I'll I I'll do some old school, same as him. But then I'm like, ooh, I can add a resistance band to this, or I can do this this way or that way. And but that also helps so that when we get the clients, they don't think, oh, all they do are lift those heavy weights. I'm like, no, you can get this by doing this as well. So it helps me to be able to do a little bit of both. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, you know, old school and creative, like combine it and you yeah. got the powerhouse yeah. basically. So yeah. uh, this is a random question. Cause I don't always get couples. Cause you guys are a couple. Just want to be very clear. Right. Yes. <laughs> so I don't always get couples. So I want to ask this, how important is it to have your partner work out with you? <laughs> <laughs> Only the question that we talked about um, was it like last year we we made a post about it. Mm. Um, it's not it's not a deal breaker, but it that person that I'm dating has to understand the importance of it um, from my aspect because um, it it has made a difference in the past because that significant other can feel like they're not getting your time because you're always in the gym is what it seems like to them, or that's not what they like to do, or they may not be as strong or look like the people in the gym. So it can be a little bit intimidating. So it, it was a plus for us because I'm like, that's our one-on-one -on -one time away from the kids. We don't have to talk business. And this is, that's how we spend our one-on-one -on -one time. Um, Catch us on the Friday. Fridays are always leg days, and we do <laughs> eight night at five guys afterwards. It's nice. It's our thing. That's everything that I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like you're taking the same route. It's, it's just, <laughs> right, because I'm like, oh, you, you're just as dedicated as I am. This is just as important to you as it is to me. You understand, you know, my eating lifestyle. You don't call me crazy for prepping all my meals and, you know, being structured, but it's an added bonus. It's good. I like that. It's like, it's like it just makes things easier, essentially. When yeah. Yes, yes, it does. Basically. Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a curveball at you now. What do you do <laughs> if you had a partner that wasn't into fitness? What would you try to do to curb them into that direction? I, I think I think it's just a lead by example. I don't yeah. I don't think you 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 force them and just you don't make it an ultimatum. You don't say, well, if you don't work out or get in shape, then this is not gonna work. You don't do that. I think as they see you, because you know what you what, what how, however you're getting it in is what you're going to put out so if you're feeling good if you're looking good and you feel good that will that will go upon on on your partner or your significant other and they will see you happy they'll see you enjoying it and i i think eventually they may start yeah. to mm-hmm. you know start to gradually go to go towards that because they'll look at oh this is a time to bond this is a time to communicate um, this is a time to share something similar and something common. And uh, after a while, I, you know, I, I think it starts off a little rough. It's some getting used to, but I think it's something that both uh, people can adapt to together. But I also think because we are competitors, or like, used <laughs> or used to be competitors, um, it, it was really rigorous. So people aren't as committed to the gym as we are. So I think, you know, just a couple of days a week for the average typical person, I think they'd be okay. But yeah. with us who, when we were competing and there were two days and having to squeeze in work and family, it could be a bit rough. Yeah, there is a difference between getting a partner in to work out and exercise with you, as opposed to when you're a competitor getting ready for a show. Uh-huh. Um, it's a different kind of commitment. <laughs> Yeah. So I, you know, if you are someone who is a competitor and your significant other does not work out at all, that is probably not the best way to introduce them into working out and to yeah. getting themselves in shape. It, you probably will turn them away very quickly. Yeah. It's like an extreme version, basically, at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you guys are competing, you're doing working out like twice a, a day. And then, like, it gets to that point where you're doing twice a day. Cardio gets sometimes, lengthy. Sometimes, sometimes three days. Sometimes three days. Yes. I have, I have yeah. some three days. Wow, um, man. But my, you know, it's it's the mentality. Like I, my whole thing. It was my first show, and I just got competitive, and I'm just like, I am not going on this stage to take anything less than first place. So I was. I've I never <laughs> seen someone <laughs> committed to <laughs> to prep as much as he was, and I <laughs> before he did. And I was like. Are you serious right now? Like, <laughs> but, but hey, it, it paid off. It paid off. It paid, it paid off. off. It paid off. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, you, you, you know, you know what it is. It's a, it's like not wanting to be on stage, and everyone looks at you like, why is that guy on stage right now? Exactly. Like, yeah. I, I've seen those yeah. videos. Yeah. <laughs> There's this one one video I see where this guy does not look like a personal, tra- but he's just he's wearing with pride, and it really teaches you a lesson about just the way you feel. And I'm just like, yes. this guy does not belong here, but somehow he's making it work. Yes, yes. And in his mind, he's so much better than what he used to be. And he has something to show for it. So <laughs> kudos to him. <laughs> but at the same time, we know that he's not supposed to be there. Right. <laughs> right. But we can't tell him no. Tell we him cannot no. tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good point. Man, you guys have given so much great information. Uh, where can people find you? And what are you guys working on right now? Um, you can find us to do several platforms. Um, we have Instagram and I am Nubian dot fit dot queen on Instagram. Um, we're on Facebook as well. Um, under I'm under Isaiah Smalls and she's under Victoria Jenkins and you can find our VIP training Facebook page through those um, sites. Um, I'm also on Instagram under the man of arms. If you type the man of arms, T H E M A N O F A R M S, um, I'll show up on Instagram. And um, our website. You just our head website. to our website. Head, head to our website. Um, it's vip charlotte.com. 
We'll put so, that in there exactly for you guys. And okay, so our final question. This is my favorite. Don't ask why, but for let's imagine you had to be, you had to leave the planet. You're going to some other some other planet, and you're going to leave the Earth, and you're going to leave the world a final gift, a final message, something you know to leave everybody. What would be the one message you'd want the world to know? And it could be fitness or health wise. What would be that one message? I, 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 I can, I just keep it simple for me. Um, find your happy medium, mm. find your happy medium, whether, whatever talents, whatever gifts that have been given to you, or you've been blessed with, find that and find a way to make a change within yourself that would affect and help other people. And, and that's, been our main inspiration so when I, I say find your happy medium find what makes you happy and use what makes you happy to bless others around you um i, I would i would say something along those lines but whatever you do make sure you're passionate about it um you don't want to spend your time just working, 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 and working for other people. You always want to do what you're passionate about. Um, and again, that goes with blessing the world with whatever you have to give and whatever you have to offer. You want to leave behind um, a legacy. You want people to remember you. Powerful. I love it. That's awesome. Hustle and Fit family, I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I did. Listen, you have to follow them. They are a powerhouse. You can see all the great energy they put out, the passion that they have. You need to follow them, get into their world, and really experience what they're offering. Anyways, I want you to have an awesome week and keep hustling and stay fit.